back. And I figured I'd bring you guys in. I keep seeing questions on the Papillon Grooming Forum uh, about dealing with knots and trimming feet. Those seem to be the two biggest questions I come across. So I was going to let Miss Lexi here give us a little bit of help answering at least my take on them. So I was noticing as I was blow drying, she got a little bit of knots right there. So you can kind of see right there flipping around. Sweetheart, come on. Let's do it, and there's a pretty good size one. Yep, there we go. A nice little set of them there. A little bit lower. And the other spot she's prone to matting, especially right now because she keeps like chewing on her little tush, but she's prone to these little guys right here. Um, so, yeah, what I do first things first, get them clean. Um, I'll rarely deal with a mat on a dog that's dirty. Um, if they're moderately clean and in good shape, I might mess with it, but if they really like, like this guy back here, I prefer working on a extremely clean dog, messing with that kind of stuff, rather than working on a dirty dog. Um, I find the good, good, um, you get them clean, all the dirt lets go, you get them conditioned, the coat gets super soft and silky, you get a little bit of coat spray in there, and everything's willing to fall out, um, rather than having to fight so hard to get, um, to work on it. You know, you're, if you're working with dirty coat, you are got the issue of, like, sticky coat, and things just want to kind of hold and, and cling more, where once you get them all, you know, blown out and, and blowy and clean... And especially the coat sprays in there, you have just a lot more, uh, less of the static issues and less of the clingy coat, and it's a lot easier to brush out. So I will almost never work on mats on dirty dogs. I much prefer getting at them once the dog's clean and dry. Um, so phase one, we're going to, so you guys can see what's going on, you can convince her to stay put. Um, start out with either, I like uh, this guy, it's become my new favorite pin brush. Uh, chat and grooming with Gio Garfalo and uh, definitely has a lot of cool uh, things to be using. Um, but yeah, this is one of my new favorite pin brushes. It does not feel like a pin brush. It brushes completely differently and does get that nice and brushed out. Um, I still like my previous favorite, um, this guy. And Focus does not like to zoom in. Anyway, uh, it's a boar hair with nylon bristle. So if they've got enough coat, I like to start with this one and then follow over with the pin brush. Um, but yeah, so I'll take all the way through the whole dog with this setup. Um, the spornet first, then the pin brush, and I'll just kind of play a little bit and, you know, ends to roots, not starting all the way up the roots, but just kind of play with the knots a little, part or coat, just kind of let the brush do its job and see how far we get with that. Side. And the other thing too is I never brush a dog or I never wash a dog without getting a good bath um, blow dry because I find if you get the coat brushed and blow dried, you're going to have a lot straighter coat and they're going to have a lot less opportunity to make it mat. Um, if it's got a little bit of kink and a little curl to it, it's going to tie itself into knots a lot easier. Um, and I said the ones on her little tush are because she chews back there and she gets some saliva ridden and then the coat starts to curl and kink a little and then that's when we have mats. But to be honest, I think we're about clear on this year without having to do anything other than a bath and a proper blow dry or a proper brush out. Um, so let's see. There's a little bit of something still stuck. So once I find what's stuck, I catch it with the comb. I'll separate the hair and try to get it isolated. There we go. So we've got that little little bit of knotting right there. And I'll just kind of get to where I can work on it. Let me see if I can zoom in. Wrong button. Wrong button. Alrighty. Let us zoom. There we go. So I'll just pick and play at it. It's off, off the body. Let's see. So I'll try a little bit of pin brush. Let's get the 
look at that. Try a little bit of this guy. Let's see what's gonna get in there and just catch and release. That one tiny little spot's in there pretty deep. Sorry guys if she's losing them. So that's it's hard to work and watch. Um Alright, let's see. There we go. Uh, there. Alright. So there's that little guy. So I do keep the, her skin cold taunt while I'm working because that helps keep it from hurting. So like I put a little pressure behind her ear here and I've got my other hand up here and just kind of pull the hair of the skin behind her ear taunt. And just kind of pick at it till it's gone. So this is definitely the smaller of them. And I'll go through and if I see even just that little bit of like a little pin right there need rid of that too because that'll just sit there and cause another mat to happen. There we go. For like the bristle. Pretty good because it'll help catch that guy out. And you're not about to stay put. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Alright, so now I can get the chrome completely behind that ear. about this other ear. And sometimes I like to let the dryer be a little bit of help if I can get her in the right position. So that the dryer's moving the hair back and out of my way. So again, you start out with my little bore in nylon. And get brush from all angles. It's important to get the little tips of her ears brushed and dried anyway. So one of my, I really, really, really like this brush because it's mostly boar's hair with just a little bit of nylon bristles, so it organizes the coat nicely. It is never, ever, ever going to give you the, the final thing I use to brush, but it's like the softest thing you can use to brush, and I tend to start with a soft brush first and then get a little bit firmer and a little firmer. That way I'm not using the firm stuff on the easy knots that just, you know, or the, the slight tangles or where the coat's just not organized and not laying flat. Um, I'm not taking the heavy duty brush to that immediately. I'm getting everything worked out I, that I can beforehand before I take the heavier duty brushes. So like I never go straight to a comb. I always start boar bristle. And then, like I said, I like incorporating this pin brush because this really does do a good job. I think it's nice and deep. It feels completely different than a normal pin brush. Um, it's kind of built a little bit differently. And it just gets you nice thorough. All right, so again, for all that nodding that was there when we first turned the camera on, and down to that little guy. Not that, that one. There we go. And down to that little guy and that little guy. So teensy little things. Um, if I was doing her as a grooming client, I wouldn't even bother brushing this. I would take, I would elevate the single little knot point and I would take a set of thinning shears and just snip the underside of it. Let's take a to focus. I would snip under here and then I would just work it out. But because we show, I don't want to sacrifice any more coat than necessary. That guy's just going to pull out once I finally touch it. It's done. See, that's only attached by that. So I'll just kind of pull that guy off. And then this little guy. Out of the ends and work back. Do what I can to split it. So someone had um, mentioned seam rippers. I think in a case like this little guy, that would work amazing. I'm gonna have to get one in my kit. Thank you. Uh, I'm to get in here organized and visual what I'm working on. So I want to hold the back of it so that I'm not pulling on her. 
She is easy to make squeak, but my goal is still to not squeak my dogs. I prefer being as careful and as nice with the excessive beauty work. <laughs> but, uh, it's my obsession, not theirs, to be matte, pretty, and stunning. All right, you can roll over. Okay, we get ready up for this. All right, princess. So again, just kind of hold behind it so that when I'm working on it, I just kind of pick at it until I separate it and get it into smaller pieces and smaller pieces and keep just working the coat that's not firmly attached to it out from under it or out of it and then it's ready to go. So now the next issue we had with Miss Lexi here are these guys. So you'll get to see my thinning scissor or thinning shear trick here because uh, she is pregnant and is due before too much longer and belly hair is so painful so like there's a couple of guys, there's just a couple of little things right here. I'm going to be shaving this anyway. So again, I pull it up. I make sure I know where the skin is underneath it. Fortunately, we can see pretty well. So I'm not going to put on there. Keep a little brush over every day of it. I'll just use a one snip, um, but like I said, sometimes because I am uh, shaving her belly out soon anyway completely, um, I don't mind cutting hair right now. So I'm just putting the end of them, trying to get this mat to separate a little bit because it's a little bit too big for me to take the thinning shears to her belly. So I put the flat end in and get it to separate. And then I've got two little mats instead of one big one. And then again, I feel for where the skin is. I make sure that my scissors are not into the skin. And I trim as low into the mat as I can without taking any chance of catching her belly. And the thinning shears, just because they only have half the teeth, I promise you, they're probably twice as sharp. They're brutal. Um, not something you either want to catch dog skin with or... Uh, your own because they're just rotten. Oh, there we go. So just kind of take a little brush through. Brush out in just a little bowl. Alrighty. So yeah, that's kind of my my tips and tricks on so that one's here a little more. Sorry, so this one's kind of just stuck and it's a little gunky. So this is why I like to clean dogs, is if they've got a little gunk and stuff stuck in them, it's usually a little bit cleaner. If I was to try to work that out, I would have pressure washed her there <laughs> before I got into trying to demat the girl. Yeah, so we've got a few more of these little guys just tucked in here, but uh, I'll go ahead and get the rest of those all done and get her brushed out. There's just a couple more. You gotta stop licking on things. Yeah. She's not ready to clean the puppies yet. They're coming. But later. Little belly up with a bunch of things. I will say, she's my best one for the grooming work. She's totally happy to have, uh, have herself worked on and brushed on and belly rubs. And she's my sweet one. But I'll probably come back um, and video a separate video on how I work on her toes for you guys. Alright. Say goodbye to Lexi. Goodbye, baby. You guys have a good day.